G-Unit. Back in the early 2000s, that G-Unit call you just heard was the most popular call in hip hop. Some might even argue that it is still the most iconic call in hip hop history. And in fact, I'm about to play it again just for you and I to enjoy it one more time. G-Unit. Back in the days, kids would even shout the G-Unit call on the schoolyard just to look cool. G-Unit was indeed that group. It's crazy that many people don't remember G-Unit when they talk about the best hip-hop groups of all time. But not many other rap groups can claim to dominate an era like G-Unit dominated the early 2000s, particularly 2002 to 2006 like G-Unit did. And not many other rap groups have a record as successful as Beg For Mercy. But how did G-Unit go from being so successful to 50 Cent wanting to forget the group ever existed? It was N.W.A. There was like all these Tupac movies. Is there going to be a G-Unit movie, man? Or are you just going to fix everything amongst the click first and then... No, put it I, don't, I don't care to do that. I think I'd like to forget the G-Unit. G-Unit began with three friends from the streets of South Jamaica, Queens. Lloyd Banks, Tony Yayo, and the man who was the leader of the crew, 50 Cent. These were the three original members of G-Unit. And in case you were wondering, G-Unit stands for Guerrilla Unit. It was just a group of three friends who loved hip hop and they were very consistent with their grind. Before 50 Cent would release the iconic Get Rich or Die Trying, there was already G Unit. 50 and his homies Yayo and Banks already released a lot of mixtapes before they eventually blew up. G Unit truly utilized mixtapes very well. In fact, according to Wikipedia, G Unit released 43 mixtapes and there's a huge chance that they probably even released more mixtapes than that number. G-Unit released three mixtapes in 2002, No Mercy No Fear, 50 Cent is the Future, and God's Plan. These men were indeed putting in that work. It was one of these mixtapes that got 50 Cent's record deal with Shady Records. 50's Guess Who's Back caught Eminem's attention and got him his joint record deal with Shady Records, Aftermath, and Interscope. 50 was signed the same year in 2002. After 50 was signed, Get Rich or Die Trying was dropped not long after. 50 Cent was the biggest name in hip hop after dropping this album, and then he decided to bring his boys with him. He was allowed to create his own label, G Unit Records. G Unit then began working on the album, Beg for Mercy, but just before they began recording Beg for Mercy, Tony Yayo was arrested for gun possession, and as a result, 50 decided to sign another rapper to the group. Young Buck joined G-Unit to fill the Tony Yayo gap. Tony Yayo still appeared on the Beg For Mercy album, but they only used material that had been recorded in the past. Yayo only appeared on two songs on that album. This is also why he wasn't used in the picture used for the album cover. Instead, only an old picture of Tony Yayo is seen on the brick wall of the album cover. After Beg For Mercy was released, G-Unit became a cultural staple and they dominated this era. Beg For Mercy has now been certified four times platinum. The group also became fashion symbols with the baggy pants and the do-rags onto the snapbacks or hats. Every member of G-Unit then went on to release solo projects. Lloyd Banks dropped Hunger For More in June 2004, Young Buck dropped Straight Outta Cashville in August 2004, and Tony Yayo released Thoughts Of A Predicate Felon in August 2005. Every album G-Unit released during this era was very successful. 50 Cent also added a fifth rapper to G-Unit during this period. Jimmy Iovine and Dr. Dre convinced 50 to add The Game to G-Unit as a way of promoting him as an artist. The first G-Unit albums The Game appeared on were Lloyd Banks and Young Buck's debut albums. And from here, The Game never looked back. He featured 50 Cent on the song How We Do and released his debut album, The Documentary, in January 2005. During this period, 50 and the game got along well together. But despite the successes that G-Unit recorded, it didn't take long for the problems to begin. The problems first started when 50 Cent and the game started beefing. 50 stated that he wrote about six songs that were on the game's documentary album. This included songs like How We Do, Hate It or Love It, and West Side Story. Like I remember yeah, doing yeah. Um, LL shit smile. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but there were original, well, I guess a lot of the original songs ended up on the album, so... Okay, I see what it is. They right. just don't want to clear the samples. Yeah, and stuff yeah. Like and, that. you know, 50 doesn't really care about that. That guy got TV shows and movies, yeah. and I don't really think he really... Because 50 is like 50... When you look at the music, I think... I think he really doesn't... 
However, the game never acknowledged or gave 50 any credit for his work on the album. Instead, he said that all 50 wrote is what you heard 50 say on the record. During this period, 50 and the game were no longer on good terms. And for the video of the song Hate It or Love It, 50 Cent allegedly refused to sit next to the game in the front seat and sat in the back seat instead. A few months later, 50 Cent kicked the game out of G-Unit while on the air. While doing a radio interview on Hot 97, 50 simply stated that he's gone and then told the game to stop saying G-Unit. The duo then went on to release diss tracks against one another. I really fucked up G-Unit clothing, the record company, the mm. whole shit. I put G-Unit in flames. Mm. And uh, yeah, he, don't, he didn't like that. The game dissed 50 on the song 300 Bars and Running, while 50 responded with his own diss track, I'm Not Rich and Still Lying. 50 Cent and Young Buck then started having their own issues as well. Young Buck started appearing less and less on not only G-Unit mixtapes, but also on several G-Unit songs. And when G-Unit showcased their songs to MTV, Young Buck wasn't part of this showcase either. So Young Buck decided to talk to the press about his situation, thinking this might result in a positive change for his situation. But unfortunately, it didn't. In typical 50 Cent fashion, once again, he used Hot 97 to make his big announcement. On the 7th of April 2008, 50 announced on the radio that Young Buck was no longer part of G-Unit. He stated that Young Buck was still signed to G-Unit Records, but he was no longer part of the group. 50 claimed that Young Buck aired private matters publicly, he missed recording sessions, and he also had a drug use problem. 50 Cent then shared the recording of a phone call between himself and Young Buck. Oh, you, you got tax times wrong this with the line. Right. I'm literally, I, you know, in my taxes. I still owe money from last year's taxes. So, but, you know, I understand you want your money and pushing for my book, pulling and needing your money that which I owe you. But it's so many other debts that I'm in for us, the taxes from last year. And then this year is about to roll around. What you just heard isn't just a phone call between Young Buck and 50. Young Buck was crying on the call while trying to reconcile with 50. That's how ruthless 50 was. The next G-Unit member 50 Cent had issues with was one of the founding members of the group. 50 Cent and Lloyd Banks' beef began when Banks rejected the chance to have Eminem on his third album. 50 tweeted that decisions like these are the reasons why he and Banks weren't as close as they used to be. 50 was truly annoyed that Banks didn't want Eminem on his record. And after this incident, 50 Cent and Lloyd's Banks' friendship never truly recovered. And Banks wasn't the only old friend that 50 Cent was no longer cool with. In February 2014, Tony Yayo stated that G-Unit had officially broken up. One of the reasons why this happened was because Yayo and Banks weren't as ambitious as 50. Yayo retired in 2014, stating that he already had achieved all he wanted to achieve in hip hop while Banks' second and third albums weren't half as successful as his debut album. 50 stated that he did so much for the both of them, but they didn't have the work ethic to sustain the success they already achieved. In fact, 50 described Yayo and Lloyd Banks as milk. These days, 50 and Yayo are cool again. But for Lloyd Banks and Young Buck, you can tell that the bond is broken beyond repair. And this is probably why we would never get that G-Unit reunion. In the end, I guess we could say that G-Unit self-destructed. But as a fan, I'm just glad that the G-Unit era did happen and the music they made will remain forever.
Chit 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 ch